Okay, this is problem 5-54. Here you have a shaft made of A992 steel. Allowable shear stress 75 megapascals. Gear B supplies 15 kilowatts. So I'll put that down, 15 kW here. Um, A6. Uh, C4. And then D would be 5. Okay, so the easiest thing to do on this is try to determine how much um, power you're going to have right between here and here. So between A and B, you have 6 kilowatts going this way, so this will be 6 anywhere between A and B. Okay, what happens here? This goes back 15 here. So once you go transition over back to B, you've gone past A, you had 6 coming in, you got 15. The summation now is going to be 9 going back this way. That's just 15 minus 6, that gives you 9. Now if you look here, you got 4 going back the other way, so when you get to here, 9 minus 4, because 4 is going the other way, gives you 5. And then when you get to the end, everything should balance out, which it does. Okay, so now the area where failure has to occur would be here where you have maximum power. So anywhere between B and C would be the failure mode here in the shaft. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's find out what our um, angular velocity is. So angular velocity is going to equal to our 600 RPM right here. We've got to convert that to uh, radians per second. Revolutions will cancel out here. Now we're down to radians. And we gotta get rid of the minutes. So one minute. Sixty seconds. Minutes will cancel out here. And when you do that, you'll get your angular velocity is going to be twenty pi radians per second. Again, you can go ahead and get the numeric value if you choose to. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out what our, uh, right here, let's find out what our minimum diameter is going to be. So all we have to do is go back to the equation, max shear stress is going to equal to the torque times the radius over the polar moment of inertia. So now let's find our torque, and we know that torque times our angular velocity we equal to power. So power over angular velocity we equal to torque. Alright, so we take our power here, which is our 9 uh, kilo, so 9 times 10 to the third. We'll divide that by 20 times pi. That'll give us our max torque. Grab the calculator real quick, run that number. 9 times 10 to the third divided by 20 times second pi. Gives me 143.24. And that'll be newtons times meters. Okay, so that's our maximum torque here. All right, so now let's just find our allowable. So let's we'll say our T max. Now our allowable T max is uh, 75 megapascals. So we'll put 75 times 10 to the six is equal to our maximum torque, 143.24. And then over R, over pi squared, Sorry, I don't mean pi squared. It's pi over two. I keep saying that. Times uh, radius to the fourth power. Okay, this obviously we can cancel some of this out. We can cancel the radius out right here and change this to three. Now we're going to bring the radius to the third up. Bring it 
bring the 75 times 10 to the 6 down. Okay, and then to solve this, all we have to do is take the 1 third power of all of that, and that will give us a radius. Oops, shoot. I'm just going to mark that out. It'll be easier. And that will give us radius. Let's we'll scroll down a little bit and give ourselves some more room. Okay, when we move down, we'll run this, and then we're going to get an R value. Uh, we run this computation, point zero one zero six, sorry, six seven. Zero there, and that'll give us a diameter and a point zero two one. 3, 5, and we'll convert that to millimeters, and that would give me 21.35 millimeters. So we need a shaft that's going to have a diameter of 22 millimeters, and that is your answer for the shaft. Okay, okay now we're going to uh, find out what the angular twist is going to be. And this really isn't very complicated either. You use just a simple equation. And you can do this as theta is equal to. Now the equation is going to be TL over JG. This being the torque being applied in that in along that section. This is the length of the section. This right here is the polar moment inertia of the cross section. This is the shear rigidity, and this is only unique to the material. This value G can found, be found in any type of textbook. Um, and what you're looking for here would be the value for A992. Steel would have a uh, rigidity value uh, published somewhere. So we're looking to find how much twist is going to be between A and B. So what we're going to do here is we're going to see how much twist is from here to here. And what twist is, basically, if I draw a small, I'll come down here and I'll talk about it. If I draw a small cross section here of a circle, it means this. I'll pick a point here. I'll color this right here. And you apply a torque to it. As you apply a torque to it, this obviously this red one will move from, say, this position to this position here, point two. All this angle right here, this is how much twist it causes in radians. And we just use this equation here. So the first thing we want to do, we want to find out what the torques are for each of these. So we go back and we know that torque is equal to power over omega. So we do the torque of along here, which is we're going to use to find out how much torque, convert this 6 kilowatts to torque. So let's say 6 kilowatts. It's going to equal to the power, which we said was 6 times 10 to the third. We're going to divide it by our radians, and I think we already said that that value is 20 pi. So I'll go back and verify that, which is right here. So if we get our calculator and run that, I think you'll get about 95. 0.49 newtons times meters. Now we'll come back and we're going to find out how much torque is being applied here. So we got a 9 kilowatts between B and C. So now we're finding how much twist is going to occur between B and C. And so we go 9 times 10 to the third divided by 20 pi. We'll run that number, and I believe that gives 143.24 newton meters, and that'll be for 9 kilowatts. And we'll run our one other, tor other torque. Right here we have 5 kilowatts. We put 5 times 10 to the third over 20 pi. 
and that's going to give us a value of 79.58. Okay, now what I would do would be to define what direction these are going to go. So we're going to look down the beam like this. This one's going to be going counterclockwise, clockwise, clockwise. So I'm going to make this one go this way, this one go this way, and then this one go this way. Okay, so now we're going to use this just equation right here and run the value for the twist. So my twist is going to be 95.49. Now the length, each of these lengths is, for each one of these is 600 millimeters. So that makes that 0.6 meters. Over the... Uh, Polar moment inertia, which is pi over 2 times the radius to the fourth power times the value of g. Now, if you look this up in the back of the book or any type of textbook, I think it's for that material, it's 75 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, so we can make, we're going to make anything that goes this way, it really doesn't matter. I'll make it anything that goes this way negative. And then you're going to do this. And these are going to look exactly the same because the lengths are exactly the same. I should put parentheses on this too. Keep running those. That's 0.60 if it doesn't look like it. Sorry. Okay, and now if you run those, again, these are going to be values in radians. I believe this value will give you about 0.044. 29 radians. Now if you take that value that once it degrees we know there are 180 degrees over one radian. Radians will cancel out and you're left with degrees and then your final answer would be approximately 2.5 Four degrees. And that it? That is it. That's your final answer. So again, not too bad. Um, you just you just got to make sure that you mark what direction each one of these is going to go because it makes sense because one of the torques here is going to try to twist it back this way. These two are going to twist it twist it back each of these. Now the lengths for these use the length between the sections, between where the torques change, not the entire length. Alright, best of luck.